When you start to plan your boat's electrical system, you need to know how much power the system should have. How many electrical gadgets have you got, and how much power are they going to use? But what if you don't know how to get started? What if you're not sure about the electrical terminology, volts, amps, watts, kilowatt hours, and how does all that relate to electrons moving along wires? Let's go through a refresher on electrical power and get up to speed on these terms. At the risk of oversimplifying, electricity is just electrons flowing along wires or stored in batteries. Volts are the pressure of the electrons and amps are the quantity of electrons. Watts are the product of volts times amps, taking into account both the pressure and the quantity. The product of volts times amps gives us the power in watts. So today let's concentrate on watts and watt hours, since that's how power is measured. We'll come back in future episodes to voltage, since it's very important to get this one right. Most electrical devices are made to operate at a specific voltage, and amps matter too. But let's start off easier. If we stick with watts for power, we'll be able to compare everything on an equal footing and figure out how much power they all use. Let's start with an example. Say I want to toast this bread to make a delicious peanut butter and banana sandwich. But how much will this take out of our ship's battery bank? So first we need to look and see how much the toaster is going to use. It says here that it needs 800 watts. 800 sounds like a lot, but how long is it going to take to make the piece of toast? Time is the next important part of our calculations. The toaster cycle lasts for three minutes. That's 1 20th of an hour. So that means 800 times <laughs> 3 over 60 is equal to 40 watt hours for our delicious peanut butter and banana sandwich. Watt hours are the best way to talk about power on a boat, since we can use them to evaluate and compare everything we need to power. In your home, you probably pay your electricity company by the kilowatt hour, which is a thousand watt hours. On board the boat, we are the power company and we'll be responsible for how we manage and maintain our kilowatt or our watt hours. This battery bank stores roughly 10,000 watt hours. That's 10 kilowatt hours. Remember, watts are the power used when a device is running, and watt hours represent how much we will run the device for in a day, or in this case, how much power we need to store. Now I want to boil a cup of water for tea. Our handy super duper British kettle says it uses 2200 watts of power. I'm going to put one cup of water in it, and we'll put it on to boil. That took one minute, so 1 60th or one minute of an hour of 2200 watts is equal to 36 watt hours for one cup of tea. To be clear, watts are the power a device uses when running, and watt hours represent how much the device will run in a single day. So the slices of toast took slightly more power at 40 watt hours than the cup of tea at 36. Now let's look at a couple of examples from our 12 volt system. On our old boat, we had a 25 watt incandescent masthead tricolor light. We used that for 11 hours a day on passages, so the formula would be 25 times 11 equals 275. Distant Shores 3's masthead tricolor is a much thriftier LED version and just uses 2 watts times 11 hours equals 22 watt hours. That means we saved 250 watt hours on passage compared to Distant Shores 2 with her incandescent masthead light. That means we just saved enough power on lights to make nearly seven cups of tea. Here are the biggest power users on board Distant Shores 3. Fridge and freezer. Each draws only perhaps 50 watts, but it's cycling on and off continuously throughout the day. The computer. This varies quite a lot from a busy day editing while at anchor to just a few minutes at sea checking the weather from predict wind. Our village marine little wonder water maker. All the lights and fans. Our kettle. Our typical four or five cups of tea or coffee each per day would use 400 watt hours or 15% of our total daily use. Remember that the total energy used includes the power and the number of hours it runs for. So even though our anchor windlass uses over a thousand watts, it's just for a minute or so. And at sea, other big power users are also running. Our instruments and our plotters, our radar, our autopilot, and our electric winches. In a future episode, we'll go into more detail on electrical budgeting, we'll look at volts, amps, and the like, and we'll go into details on our solar power system too. 
but it's a gorgeous sunny day. So let's go for a swim and see if we can catch up with some of those green sea turtles we've been seeing in the bay. If you're planning a cruise yourself, you can check out some of our other how-to videos. And if you aren't already subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button too. See you next time on Distant Shores. risk of oversimplifying. I can't eat any more peanut butter and banana sandwiches if I'm gonna go into this engine room. <laughs>